new tropical storms possible on either side of the Pacific next week and even this weekend on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 7th. We still have no active tropical cyclones because we had Hidaya last week but we've been struggling recently to see any tropical cyclones active and we're still code unclassified which means that we're not on any kind of alert level. There are though one or two areas of interest that could develop in the near and more distant future. It's 25 days until Atlantic hurricane season and there's no areas of interest here uh, but still we've got big storms sweeping across the central United States reaching the Mississippi Valley right now. That's the severe weather part. In the eastern Pacific it's only eight days until the hurricane season begins and whilst we've not marked anything yet it is starting to creep into the GFS modeling uh, at day seven and beyond that we could see an early start or an early riser a tropical cyclone near Central America. In the western Pacific we're up to 30% chance now for the area of interest that's over the Micronesian islands whether it's that system itself or whether something else forms just east of it, I'm not sure yet, but it will be heading northwestwards towards uh, Palau and Yap and eventually close to the Philippines. In the Australian region, obviously that area of interest that we had marked yesterday, we've dropped it. You can still see it though, it is that little cloud area there over western New Guinea, the Indonesian side, uh, producing some convection. In the southwest Indian Ocean, we've got nothing active right now, as you can clearly see. One or two areas of uh, uh, clouds and uh, some convection and heavy rainfall though, quite close to where Hidaya struck last week, uh, not helping flooding situations in Tanzania and in Kenya. And in the South Pacific, we've not got much going on here right now either, only small areas of thunderstorms really, uh, not really having any impact on uh, tropical cyclone chances. So let's take a look at what is currently our best candidate and that is Invest 90W. It is currently 460 kilometers from Yori Peak, 568 from Woolley Eye, 736 from Yap, all in Micronesia, 807 from Palau, at the top left there, 1182 kilometers from Guam. Those familiar with uh, these storms and the maps will know that this is extremely low latitude at the minute and it's still well and truly entrenched in the Indus Tropical Convergence Zone, this low pressure system, along with its neighbour, Invest 91W, which is further west. Let's look at the, this whole situation on satellite imagery and you can see all of that going on there, including the one in the southern hemisphere over uh, Indonesia. But looking north, uh, we're looking for signs of any circulations there popping up, but no real signs of that yet. A close-up then on Invest 90W looks like this, blowing up uh, copious amounts of convection right now. Uh, it doesn't have a center of circulation at this point. Uh, it's very disorganized, but it will slowly uh, improve if it becomes that system that we're all looking at on the models. Uh, not all models are still agreeing though with it becoming a tropical cyclone. That's why we're only at 30 percent and still big question marks over where it will go whether it will recurve or whether it will move into the philippines as a much weaker storm well, once again good cloud tops in there not affecting any land areas now here's the other one invest 91p that's the one on the southern coast of uh, new guinea the indonesian side and it is still like it looking decent actually blowing up big amounts of convection on that south side but the problem is it's right along the coast of land right now and it looks like it's going to die off very soon from what it's got at the minute uh, some kind of rotation there on uh, radar but it is not uh, good enough to be considered a tropical cyclone by any stretch and here's a close-up of the rapid scan of the storms that are parading across the central United States right now, just about to cross the Mississippi uh, and entering into Tennessee, Kentucky and into Indiana. 10% SIG tornado risk today for large areas of uh, the Midwest and we will be live with more coverage on that today. 
and more thunderstorms in the very deep south of the Caribbean there. Um, it's not going to be a tropical cyclone, I can tell you that much, but there are some thunderstorms near Panama. And this is the uh, area of Africa, uh, the MDR region, the eastern area there. Not nothing going on there yet as you'd expect this time of year and looking at the eastern pacific there's one or two dribs and drabs of uh, convection blowing up and in the western pacific another look at what's going on here and you can see those uh, little areas of uh, convection way down south uh, they're going to have to pull north if they're going to have any chance eventually uh, off india there are some significant storms blowing up there uh, and also a line of storms really from uh, southern thailand into malaysia northwards uh, through the rest of the country. Sea surface temperatures still look very respectable in the eastern Pacific and increasing with up to 32 degrees Celsius in some areas south of the Gulf of Tehuantepec. In the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico is starting to get a few more yellows appearing there, including just off the coast of Mississippi and Alabama. And the Gulf Stream also starting to look better there. Caribbean Sea looking especially good with temperatures up close to 30 degrees. In the Western Pacific, it's the South, South China Sea that's excelling, uh, but also increasing temperatures significantly in the last few days off the coast of eastern Luzon, uh, up to 30 to 31 degrees Celsius, and temperatures nearing 33 degrees in parts of the Bay of Bengal near the Andaman Islands, and uh, more hot temperatures in the Andaman Sea as well. Um, looking out for our first system there. Southwest Indian Ocean, a few spots near the Seychelles, the temperatures up to 30 degrees Celsius. But in general, those temperatures are starting to decrease, We're about 27 degrees for Mauritius and Reunion. And off the coast of Australia, we're still seeing quite a few spots of temperatures of 29 degrees Celsius, but in general, those areas are starting to fade away a little bit, and some areas off 80 Mile Beach in Western Australia are starting to get below 26. And in the South Pacific, it definitely for New Caledonia, those temperatures are fading away as well. Uh, Vanuatu, the northern part of it, and northern Fiji still got those good temperatures up and above 28 to 29 degrees. Compared to average, it looks like this. The orange zones are above average, the blue zones are below. The Atlantic still has a cool subtropics, but a very warm, deep tropics there, and Caribbean up to 3 degrees above average. Eastern Pacific has a big warm area off the coast of El Salvador and Guatemala, which will be very important when we look at the models, because that's where they're expecting a storm next week. And the Western Pacific also looking pretty decent in the South China Sea up towards the southern Ryukyu Islands. They have Bengal also looking very good. Oceanic heat content in the South Pacific looks like this and you can still see some very high amounts of energy but they are at rather low latitudes. The Eastern Pacific ramping up as well, three orange zones there now which is uh, certainly uh, impressive compared to the time of year, not too far off peak season last year actually and a big dark red spot now off the coast of the Philippines there in the Philippine Sea. Now this is the Atlantic, uh, the orange areas are increasing south of Jamaica, uh, the loop current still showing only a little bit of energy and the Western Caribbean also showing a fair amount as well, really greens and higher there have some good amounts. So let's check the GFS computer model then for the next five days. So first of all, it starts to develop this system, uh, not straight away, but it will be just before the weekend, I think, or at the weekend, perhaps, 11th and 12th of May there, it starts to take shape, and it does make a beeline for Palau now on this latest model. Still lots of uncertainty over the track and intensity of this storm, but the GFS reckons by the end of day five, it will be pretty much on top of Palau uh, as a strong tropical storm. Looking at rainfall expectations for the same period, uh, you could expect to see quite a lot of rainfall in the next seven days in this area if you're underneath this storm. Uh, there's one or two little atolls that might be, uh, but you could see up to 20 inches of rainfall in isolated locations within the storm. That's 500 millimeters. For Palau, the current projection is 12 inches, 300 millimeters. And up there in Yap, they're just uh, away from it really, uh, still getting three inches there. And on Guam, it's one inch of rainfall rainfall up there. But you see once again isolated amounts of over 500 millimeters possible if you're unlucky enough to be caught in the middle of that storm if it happens that way. Well in the longer range we've got a uh, crazy anomaly here in the eastern Pacific. There's a system that forms off Nicaragua and moves northwestwards and becomes a category four. Well I mean what else can I say about that? It's just uh, 
a crazy GFS run right there, calling for a Category 4 on Day 9. It won't happen, will it? It'll be a very small storm, uh, but, well, you can never be too sure, but certainly a chance that it could become a hurricane as it moves slowly westwards or northwestwards. As for the Western Pacific storm, GFS looks like it develops it a little bit later compared to previous model runs, but it still gets up to the hefty heights of Category 4 status as well. 140 miles per hour at peak there as it recurves much closer to the Philippines than earlier model runs have been showing. Will that trend continue? If it does, then that will bring a landfall closer and closer to the Philippine Islands and possibly jeopardize its chances of strengthening beyond there. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. Still waiting for Hone t-shirts are still there as well and we're certainly not expecting Hone this week. Well, in the silly range, this gets even sillier. Uh, this Eastern Pacific storm looked like it was going to die out. Well, guess what? It's round two and it starts up again, probably becoming a category three there. Turns around, does a little loop, one loop, and going around for another little loop there. And then it goes off and makes landfall in El Salvador on the 17th, uh, no later than that, uh, at the very end of that run there, uh, towards the 23rd of May. Uh, a ridiculous model run here on this storm. We'll have to watch out for run-to-run -run consistency. If we start to see some consistency, we'll take it more seriously. As for the Western Pacific system, well, the GFS is still uh, interested about uh, a significant typhoon landfall on the Japanese islands, which would be very unlike uh, this time of year. Usually, storms would die off well before then. Uh, so watch again, that storm, very powerful approach, uh, still Category 3 just before reaching land, and then it delivers Category 1 winds mainly uh, to the southern part of uh, Honshu. After that you can see a second system forming there as well waiting in the wings moving through into the western pacific from the uh, south china sea. So goodness me we could be on for a very busy week next week if all that happens. On this day last uh, on May the 7th 1975 it was a busy day in a different basin. The Indian Ocean had it all, the North Indian Ocean today, a Category 2, 2A on the left-hand side in the Arabian Sea, and a Category 1, 1B. A uh, nice little link-up between the uh, name tags and the category numbers there, both near their peak intensity, 1B making landfall in Myanmar. Oh goodness me, well back to today then, the next name on the Atlantic naming list, the first one of that is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific it's Aleta, and in the Central Pacific it's Hone. It's also Noah's Hurricane Preparedness Week this week, so make sure you get your preparedness in there and uh, take a look at Noah's website for tips. In the Western Pacific the next name is Iwiniar, in the North Indian Ocean it will be Limal. 16 storms so far this year, we are still 31% below average in terms of cyclone energy. In the Australian region the next name is Robin, in the Southwest Indian Ocean, Iali, and in the South Pacific it's Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin, we'll return with another update tomorrow.